Hey everybody, Jim here with another video for you. This is Shocktober Volume 17, more WTF movies. But at the end of this video, if you like what you see, please consider giving me a thumbs up, a possible subscribe. Most importantly, please leave comments below. Let me know some more of the movies from this category that you would fit into this. Now, I already did one video along these lines about a week ago, and uh, I said in that video that I had many other films that could have quite easily have fit into this category, and that's what we're doing today. It's a follow-up. Uh, again, the only thing that these movies have in common, other than their horror movies, is that there's at least one moment, if not the entire plot, where you're scratching your head and saying, WTF. So we're going to just jump right in. We're going to start. There's no rhyme or reason here. The first movie is Paul Schrader's Cat People. Starring Natasha Kinski, Malcolm McDowell, Annette O'Toole, and John Hurd, among others. This is a remake of a movie from the late 40s, early 50s, I believe. Uh, although the plot is quite different. This is more of an erotic thriller than a horror movie, but there are more than one occasions in this movie where you're just scratching your head saying, what the F? Malcolm McDowell is really creepy in this movie. And again, very very bizarre flick. You want to talk weird? How about Phantom of the Paradise? Directed by Brian De Palma. This one stars William Hickey, Garrett Graham, and uh, Jessica Harper from um, Suspiria fame. This is a rock and roll horror comedy loosely based on The Phantom of the Opera. Very, very bizarre movie. <laughs> it's all I can say. It's an acquired taste. Uh, this was a more recent uh, addition to the catalog. I was trying to fill out my uh, De Palma catalog. And I remember seeing this one on cable when I was a kid. Didn't remember much about it and bought it and watched it and haven't watched it since. I might go back to it at a future date, but yeah, and again, like most of the movies on this list, very, very strange. You want to talk strange? How about Don Coscarelli's epic, Bubba Hotep, starring Bruce Campbell and Ozzie Davis? This is the movie where an old folks home that contains Elvis Presley and JFK battle against a soul-sucking Mummy. <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous movie. Again, very divisive. A lot of people cannot stand this movie. I absolutely love this movie. I think it's hysterically funny. And Ozzie Davis and Bruce Campbell are excellent together. They really are. It's actually kind of touching the relationship that these two have. One of Bruce Campbell's best performances. I love Bubba Hotep. We got a couple Stephen King properties for you. The first one is The Lawnmower Man, starring Pierce Brosnan, Jeff Fahey, and uh, oh God, Jeffrey Combs. Or, I'm sorry, Jeffrey Combs, uh, Jeffrey Lewis, and the beautiful Jenny Wright. This one is directed by Brett Leonard. I said that this is a Stephen King property, but it is in title only. Uh, Stephen King wrote the short story, The Lawnmower Man, which was in his Night Shift collection, I believe. Uh, and it has absolutely nothing to do with this story. Uh, they optioned his story. They made the movie. He saw the movie and sued to have their name, his name taken off of the credits because originally it was billed as Stephen King's The Lawnmower Man. So they did. He won that case. And then... When they put it out on videotape, they re-released it with Stephen King's name on it again, and he sued him again, and he won again, and he has gone on record to say that he won more money on that second lawsuit than any movie deal he has ever made. Again, very divisive movie. This is more science fiction than horror, although there are some horror elements. This movie has not dated well. The The, the special effects are definitely dated. Uh, the ideas in this movie have not aged well. But you know what? I will always, always love this cheese fest. I don't know why. I just do. And then we've got Sleepwalkers. 
this is without a doubt Stephen King's most bizarre film. It ain't even close. This one stars uh, Brian Krause, Matchin Amick, a small appearance uh, from uh, Mark Hamill, and the wonderful Alice Krieg. This movie is about an incestuous mother and daughter, or mother and uh, son who sacrifice virgins, and the only thing that can kill them are cats. If that doesn't sound bizarre to you, I don't know what is. And again, this is a weird, goofy movie, but again, very enjoyable. And then we've got Deep Rising, directed by Stephen Summers and starring Treat Williams, Fomka Jensen, Anthony Hill, Wes Studi, uh, Kevin J. O'Connor, Digimon Monsu. I mean, this movie's got a killer, killer cast. This is a kaiju movie. It's about these guys that go out to an uh, abandoned ocean liner out in the middle of the ocean to try to rip it off, and they get there, and all the all the people are gone, and there's blood everywhere, and shit just goes nuts from there. This movie is awesome. It is so much fun. Uh, the WTF in here, it's not so much the plot. There's a couple of moments in the movie that'll make you say that, but in a good way. Uh, one scene in particular, I won't spoil it, but it has to do with Kevin J. O'Connor and Wes Studi, where uh, Kevin J. O'Connor tries to be a, a good guy, and he gives Wes Studi a gun so he could finish himself off. And I, I'll stop right there. you got to see the rest of the scene. But I love Deep Rising. It is so, so much fun. Rest in peace, Treat Williams. Then we've got Overlord. This one uh, stars uh, Wyatt Russell and Jovan Adapo. This is a bizarre... Oh, directed by Julius Avery. I'm sorry. This is a bizarre World War II Nazi zombie movie. Uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with the game Wolfenstein, Castle Wolfenstein. This movie is Cap and, er, is uh, Wolfenstein the movie because it is literally the same plot as the game with uh, Nazi zombie occult creatures going on, super soldiers, the whole nine yards. This movie is balls out fun. It is, like I said, it is very weird. There's a couple of moments in this movie, again, you'll be like, what the F? But man, this movie's entertaining as hell. And then we've got Dead and Buried. This one is directed by Gary Sherman. And it stars James Franciscus, uh, Jack Albertson, Melody Anderson, and a very young Robert England, Freddy Krueger himself. I was originally going to include this on another video that I'm going to do in a couple of days, uh, which has to do with zombies, but this is not really a zombie movie per se, although it does have to do with the undead. I don't want to go into the plot too much because it'll spoil it. And one of the wonderful things about this movie is the plot as it unfolds. And there are more than one moment in this movie where you will definitely say WTF. Then we've got It Follows. Directed by David Robert Mitchell. And this one, uh, what the hell is her name? I don't remember her name now. She's in Long Legs. Michael Monroe, maybe? I don't know. Uh, this is a good movie. It's not a great movie. I actually think it's a little overrated. Uh, I know a lot of people love the musical score because it reminds them of John Carpenter. And to me, it's an annoying John Carpenter imitation. <laughs> but the, the, hick, the hook on this movie is great. You have sex, and then suddenly there is this spirit or creature or whatever following you no matter where you go. And the only way to get it to stop is if you have sex with somebody else, and then it goes after them. And the kick is, is once it kills the victim, it automatically reverts back to the person that was in the chain earlier. Okay? Uh, again, slow burn of a movie. A couple of moments in this movie, as far as the WTF goes, has to do with the spirit and a pool. 
If you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. Because when I saw this movie, that was what I was saying. What the F is this? Again, strange movie. Good movie. I think it's a little overrated, though. Kind of like this one. In the Mouth of Madness. Directed by John Carpenter. And starring the incredible Sam Neill. Sam Neill is fantastic in this movie. Uh, John Glover, uh, Charlton Heston, Jurgen Prochnow, and David Warner, among others. This was the third part of John Carpenter's Apocalypse trilogy, with uh, the, um, the Thing and Prince of Darkness being the first two chapters. And all three of them have to do with the end of the world. This one is the weakest of the three, in my opinion. Now, I'm, I know I'm in the minority here, uh, because In the Mouth of Madness is one of John Carpenter's most beloved fans, and the supporters of this film are f very, very loyal to it. They will, they'll, they'll draw blood in defense of this movie. And again, I like this movie. I do. There's some, there's some really wild imagery in this movie, and again, Sam Neill is fantastic in this movie. But quite frankly, the plot itself left me wondering, what the F? Because there are so many times in this movie, the first time I saw it, I was just confused as hell. Again, solid movie. It's not one of my favorite Carpenter films, but I do like it. And then we've got Jacob's Ladder. Directed by Adrian Lyne. And starring Tim Robbins, Elizabeth Pena, and uh, Danny Aiello in a small appearance from Macaulay Culkin when he was just a little, little guy. Jacob's Ladder was written by the same screenwriter, uh, Bruce J Joel Rubin, who also wrote Ghost. And both of those movies came out the same year. He said that Ghost was his version of heaven and Jacob's Ladder is his version of hell. And throughout this movie, you're wondering what the F is going on because this movie is bizarre, but man, is it good. And the performances are great. Tim Robbins, it's one of his best performances by far. And there are some really, really creepy visuals in this movie. It has been remade. I have not seen the remake, but again, the original Jacob's Ladder, fantastic film. Okay. And then we're going to go to a couple killer movies. First one, is Wes Craven's Shocker. This one stars Mitch Pelleggi, uh, Peter Berg, and... Uh, uh, shit. What's his name? Michael Murphy. I'm sorry. This is about a killer who gets the electric chair and by some combination of witchcraft and whatever else is able to transform his body into electricity and it's able to go from person to person to person and this movie's ridiculous it is absolutely ridiculous and again definite moments in this movie of WTF especially uh the finale where this guy Horace Pinker the the killer and Peter Berg's character are chasing each other through TV land and popping up in different TV shows and shit <laughs> it doesn't make a lick of sense I love this movie. It's ridiculous. I mean, it is completely ridiculous, but it is a lot of fun, and it has a killer heavy metal soundtrack. I love Shocker. And we've got a foreign film for you from the, uh, Takashi Miike, Ichi the Killer. And if it's a Miike film, you know it's WTF because this guy specializes in these films. It's the guy that uh, did Audition, among other movies. This movie is beyond bizarre. I don't even know how to describe this movie. And it's it's very violent. It's very disgusting. Uh, WTF all over this bad boy. Because again, I'm struggling to even describe what's in store when you watch this movie. Again, not for everyone. You've got to have a very, very strong stomach for this one. This one is ex extremely, extremely graphic. But uh, Ishii the Killer, definitely a WTF. Then we've got American Psycho, directed by uh, Mary uh, Heron, and starring an incredible Christian Bale in the lead role. Reese Witherspoon, William Dafoe, 
Samantha Morris, Jared Leto, uh, Josh Lucas. Great cast. Great cast. This is based on the novel from Brett Easton and Alice, which I did read. And that book is unbelievably disgusting. It is hard to read. It is beyond gnarly. Okay? And when I heard that they were making a movie of it, I was like, how in the hell are they going to pull this off? Because like I said, that book is unbelievably nasty. And then I saw the movie and realized, this is genius. They turned that gnarly, dark movie into a comedy. And that's exactly what this movie is. It's a dark comedy. Not for everyone, like most of the movies on this list. Christian Bale is unbelievable in this movie. He is fantastic. Please, at least give this movie a chance if you've never seen it. Like I said, it's very divisive. Most people do not like this movie at all. It's an acquired taste. But... If you can get around some of the goofiness and just stick to the performances and the core of what the movie is, it's brilliant. We're going to end it with this one. James Mangold's Identity. With another killer cast. John Cusack, Ray Liotta. Uh, crazy Gary Busey's son, Jake, is in this one. <laughs> uh Rebecca De Mornay, um, just so many great character actors. John McGinley, um, name after name after name of great character actors in this movie. This movie is about a group of strangers who get stranded in a motel and they start dying one by one in mysterious ways. And there is a moment halfway through the movie where it is a huge WTF moment. Now, I kind of saw where this movie was going before it got there. I did not see the ending. And the ending is great. And it's another one of those WTF movies. Uh, Identity is awesome. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Um, like I said, it was directed by James Mangold. He did this one uh, before he did uh, the Wolverine movies. But uh, like I said, Identity is a fantastic movie. If you've never seen it, please give it a chance. I think you will really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, a possible subscribe. Most importantly, leave comments below. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to drop another video tomorrow, but I will be back at it on Monday. And I also want to give uh, a quick reminder that this coming Tuesday night, uh, Sean from Movie Assault, uh, Kenny from Kenny's uh, Forgotten World of Movies, and myself will be doing our bi-weekly uh, live chat. It will be involving with our top 10 horror movies, uh, and we will have uh, Mike from Mike's DVD and Blu-ray collection on with us. Uh, I'll leave the links below. That will be on Tuesday at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And it runs roughly two hours. So I hope everybody's having a great weekend. And we'll catch you on the next one.